Good morning. <laughs> I'm going to start from, from the beginning, uh, asking if any of you have ever discovered a planet outside the solar system. Me, me neither, but if you go to the webpage planethunters.org, you can try to discover them from the coach of your home. Basically, it's NASA's Kepler's um, spacecraft is sending signals, uh, and then when you find a, a discontinuity in the pattern, there, is, there might be a planet. Turns out that we don't have enough astronomers as a planet to look at these signals, and the computers doesn't work very well. So uh, in this web page, they look for help for citizen science scientists. And uh, so far, they have analyzed more than almost 30 million signals, and they have found more than 34 potential planets. It's not bad. I get closer to Earth, and something that we do a lot in Earth, which is, in fact, playing video games. How many of you have ever played Tetris? Not bad. Or this one. <laughs> Okay, so as a humanity, we approximations say that we spend more than 300 million hours per day. So making like gross numbers, I have like that we play like 500 hours per malaria case in the world. So I, okay, malaria, I mean, all of you know much more about malaria than me, so I'm not going to explain what it is or where it is, but as we heard before, uh, we need accurate information of, of where it is. Okay, and uh, there are rapid tests, there are molecular tests, but it's still optical microscopy, so how the gold is standard, and it's in a lot of places in the world. So with the pieces of the galaxies and the video games, I, I ask myself, hey, can I make people play a game and look for real malaria images? Basically, in this, the idea is instead of having like someone look in the microscope, make it, maybe I can have someone uh, looking for these parasites from home, if I can send the image to them. So uh, last year I created the, the game uh, mariaspot.org, where you have to play one minute against malaria, basically. You have to look, digitize real uh, blood smears, in this case is thick samples, for the, just for, the, the, for, for making the pilot and uh, people have to find as many parasites as possible in, in one minute in some images. This is how the game lo looks like. So it's a game. Basically, you have a counter with the time, you have to find it to shoot the right parasite instead of shooting aliens. If you shoot other thing, uh, wrong. And in a couple of months, more than 10,000 players from 100 countries uh, tag a lot of parasites, okay? analyze a lot of blood smears. And then the, the question is, I mean, but people really learn to do that. About 70% of the clicks are in the right place. Still, maybe it's not enough. So the next question is how many opinions of people, how many people have to analyze the same image so I have enough redundancy in their clicks so I can combine them and have the somehow perfect of the right parasite counting. Uh, the idea is very simple. If you give the same image to 10 people and nine agree that there is a parasite there, probably there will be a parasite. So in this, in this paper, you can see the statistical analysis of all these more than 10,000 clicks. Uh, the conclusions are that 20 people that play for the first time, you merge in a wise manner their clicks, and you will have uh, as good parasite counting as a gold standard, which we're experts in this case. If you take 13 people trained for one minute, you may have the same results. So now, I mean, this is interesting, which is, I mean, basically there is some mathematical modeling behind, which is, I mean, how works the collective perception? How works, how you can, like, link different people analyzing the same image? And depending on the number of people you give the same image, do you have, like, better or more accurate results? So there were, like, some interesting mathematical, uh, mathematical formulas that appear that allow you to model the system. I mean, if I want to catch 80% of the parasites, I have to use a, um, a group of X number of people. The next question is, I mean, maybe in case this can be used for real life, 
uh, why not connecting the system to the, to the internet? The, the idea might be that maybe a mobile phone uh, connected to the microscope can send the images wherever you have connection. Today, maybe we don't have connection in, the, in old places, but normally we have mobile phone connection. Here, you can send the images piece by piece, but maybe in three years, in five years, you have connection everywhere. So the idea is that you send the images to the internet, then you spread this to the, to the people that somehow play, you recollect the information, and you can have diagnosis where you don't have enough specialists, or maybe cheaper. I mean, the idea is to help physicians, to, to help specialists, medical specialists. If this can be done by someone that has not a real training, but just training in this precise problem, maybe, I mean, you can use the time of specialists for other, for other things, or even access to remote places where you don't have this kind of things. Uh, now we are working to make a, a field test. This, the game was with, let's say, offline samples that we took in, in a lab in South Africa. Now we want to go to, a, to somewhere uh, and in parallel to the normal operations of a clinic, test the system. Uh, there is another question, which is, can you use this crowdsource methodology for other, uh, for other diseases, maybe rare diseases, for other diseases where you have a massive number of cases that maybe you don't have enough specialists or they are very expensive. Uh, I mean, some people suggested that pap smears or even sputum smears might be candidates for this kind of, of analysis. Uh, another possibility, which is already there, in fact, some months after this malaria spot project, uh, here in, in UK, we got the Cancer Research Council uh, doing basically the same with cancer images. Uh, at MIT, there is another project, also like six months ago, which is called iWire, where citizen scientists basically map neurons from electron microscopy. If we go through this venue, that basically, I mean, a lot of people can be seeing these kind of images, which are the legal or even the ethical implications for, for patients, even if they are in the, in the developing world and they have just this possibility, for instance, for doctors, even for players. I mean, this is very hypothetic, but just the idea that in the future, some kind of assessment of a blood smear can be done by 100 people distributed around the world. That 99.999 of the cases works, but there is one case that doesn't work. Who is liable for this? And as we were saying before, why not creating a virtual task force of, of people that know how to analyze certain type of images? Or even, I mean, the people that make it, that are very good, probably they are very, very good. Maybe this can become a job. I mean, and this is, is, not, this is not, not a joke. This organization, which is called Samasurs, is already providing dignified digital jobs in Africa to women uh, and youth people. And this is news from last week, where the government of Kenya is advocating for, for digital jobs. What if we can somehow help the diagnosis uh, teaching people uh, analyzing biomedical images? Uh, that is, I'm finishing, I'm looking for partners. Maybe, I mean, you have ideas of which kind of images you think that would be like interesting to test. Uh, maybe people try to want to think about how to integrate this crowd matching algorithms. Uh, this is part of the team that helped in the, in the first iteration of the project uh, with people in Spain, uh, South Africa, and New York. And I think that's all. Thank you very much.